Hey everybody, welcome back. We're about to look at some TikToks and talk about them. And we're going to talk for a minute about the situation with my channel being reported, but not yet. I know people got to be upset. You spend your whole life trying not to be a fat bitch because you think it's like the worst thing in the world. And then you see a broad like me, just a big f***ing behemoth, living my best life. That's got to hurt. This creator makes a lot of content like this that goes viral in the fat acceptance space. And honestly, I think she's pretty funny most of the time, but I really dislike all the content that only serves to further the narrative that people hate you and it's us against them. This attitude isn't building confidence, it's building resentment. And I don't see confident people when I watch these. I see incredibly insecure people who desperately want to know what it's like to actually be living their best life. Did you know it is impossible to empathize with someone unless you are directly experiencing the things that they do? Wait, you can feel empathy even if you haven't shared an experience with somebody? Tell that to Drew Manning. You know, this guy. Mallory does this series where she talks about TV shows that she considers toxic diet culture. And today she's talking about a show we actually talked about on here called From Fit to Fat to Fit. I made a video about this show because I was pretty shocked at the concept of personal trainers choosing to gain 40% of their body weight and then lose it with their clients. Fit to Fat to Fit is one of these rare instances where I've never seen the show. <laughs> Love that for me. And I made it through almost three episodes before I had to call it. I'm done. I get it. I get the point. The biggest difference between me and someone that is overweight, I think, is just the willpower. You know, most people that aren't in great shape, they lack that willpower. And like every other show I've covered on this series, you can just go down the boxes and check them off of things that were included. Headless fat people, check. Obesity scare tactics, check. ASMR of eating, check. Up close shots of disgusting food all over people's faces, check. She's acting like she needs to defend these clients from the trainers, but most of them actually admit to struggling with their willpower and motivation. And part of why we talk about junk food and processed food on this channel so much is because those foods are being designed to reward you for the experience of giving in. That's incredibly predatory, so rather than rolling your eyes at the conversation of willpower here, we need to center it and discuss it with nuance so people can understand that those who are struggling with willpower are struggling by design. The majority of the show is putting these personal trainers up on a pedestal like they're making some immense personal sacrifice by overeating for a few months. I am over it. The eating and the gaining of the weight, it's taken Honestly, the most indulgence that I saw on the show isn't these trainers gorging themselves on 8,000 calories a day, but them acting like they are superheroes for doing so. I'm currently holding at a very high risk of heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and all the complications that come with it, like kidney disease, blindness, amputations, and so forth. That makes sense. Not the trainer crying at somebody else's doctor's appointment. She can say it's sarcastic like that, but I'm not sure I would overeat for months just to help someone else lose weight. So yeah, there's some contrived drama, but these trainers are actually sacrificing something here. And she's trivializing it by saying they're just overeating for a few months. They're maybe not all selfless angels. Seeing an overweight person in a tank top or an overweight person with their legs out, that's what disgusts me about fat so much empathy. But the show is clearly about trying to help overweight people, not about making fun of them or watching them suffer. It became very clear to me about halfway through the second episode that I watched that what we are witnessing are people who have a bunch of socialized fat phobia, because we all have it, and a disordered relationship with food and exercise, projecting all of those feelings onto clients. And then as a result, watching these clients feel worse and worse about themselves. And the only thing that builds those clients back up are when people in their lives congratulate them for their weight loss. Way to go! You've ruined someone else's relationship with food and exercise. These shows don't actually want to help anybody. They just want to torture fat people because people love to watch that. To assert that people consume content like this out of a collective desire to see fat people suffer 
is kind of the same energy as the first video. Why are you trying to convince overweight people that they're surrounded by others who enjoy their pain? It couldn't be that people watch shows like this because struggling with food and exercise is extremely relatable, or that watching other people achieve their goals is highly motivating. It's that people are wicked. That's your message? Drew Manning himself has been critical of this show, and he's critical of the weight loss industry as a whole. He's just not pro-obesity, and I think that's the real issue she has here. I don't know if you're ready for this one. Is a protein cookie healthier than a Burger King? You know the deal, we're gonna be looking at the whole cookie. Yes, it's two servings, but when they advertise 16 grams of protein, they're referring to the whole cookie, and we're gonna be looking at the whole Junior Whopper. Okay. I really don't know why she makes these so condescending, despite the fact that by the end, she's hardly proved anything. First up, calories. 420 calories in the protein cookie, 340 calories in the Junior Whopper. Carbs, 59 grams, around 30 grams. 30.4 if we want to be particular. Fat, 12 grams, around 19 grams in the burger. Protein. 16 grams, 15 grams, one gram difference of protein, which is menial. Sugar, 25 grams, 7.3 grams. The design here is really misleading and I think it actually confuses people more than anything else. Is butter a carb? Yes. I've done a few of these now. The reason I do these is to prove to you that just because it says it's high in protein doesn't make it healthier. That if we're eating protein bars, that doesn't make us better than those of us that eat Burger Kings. And to destigmatize foods that we feel shame about eating. Because newsflash, there is no such thing as a good food and there is certainly no such thing as bad food. And I say this is confusing because it starts off with her saying, which one is healthier? Healthier and healthy are not the same thing, but that's really easy to miss here. And instead, I see in her comments how most people are interpreting these as a healthy food versus a junk food. And wow, the junk food won. Mm hmm mm hmm Yes, a thousand times. Yes. And then to compare these foods with just a macronutrient profile is kind of like writing a book report with just the cliff notes. If you're a beginner with nutrition, like a lot of us are, this series is fine for learning about macros or marketing tricks even, but there is not enough information here for actionable insights to be made. Yet that is her purpose with these. Actionable insights are just conclusions that we draw from data that can be turned directly into action or response. Think of Google reviews. The point is to take the information from those reviews and use them to create meaningful changes or improvements in a product or experience. So here she's presenting us with a data set in the comparison of the cookie and the burger. And the actual insight is supposed to be eat the Burger King because how different is it really from this supposedly healthy cookie? And it really works. People leave her comments like, you're teaching me I can eat what I want to. And that would be great if it was because she's helping people make more informed decisions. I want that for everybody. That is not the same thing as eating what you want because a lady on the internet told you that there's no such thing as healthy food or unhealthy food. It's just random. If you're an intuitive eater, are you totally out of control with food? Let's talk about it. She's responding to a comment that says, if I eat intuitively, I will eat anything and everything. I need to control what I eat so that I eat health. The short answer is no, because when you're eating intuitively, there is no control and you don't need it. And here's why. In the intuitive eating framework, you're healing your relationship with food. So when I hear this, generally these people are not yet through the process of healing their relationship with food, meaning they still have food rules, right, wrong, good, bad, healthy, unhealthy, right? These are the language red flags that I hear and go, okay, we still have a very, very definitive feeling about what food is and how it works and what I'm allowed to eat and what I'm not. Healing your relationship to food could mean so many different things. And differentiating foods as healthy or unhealthy should not be a red flag. Whatever words you want to use, not all foods are equal. The next thing is when I hear somebody who says that they feel out of control when they're eating intuitively, generally those people aren't working with anybody. So similar to like healing trauma or I don't know, going to a doctor and healing some sort of ailment. You wouldn't like want to sit on your computer alone looking at WebMD and hoping that you're fixing your ailment, right? So similarly, you want to work with somebody who knows how to intuitively eat, who can guide and teach you, who's trained in the thing. Because I'll tell you, there are a lot of nuances just like this that require special attention and support.
So if I understand correct, we're healing our relationships with food because we've internalized all these fake rules about food, which has no rules. So we just need to pay someone like her to teach us the right rules, you know, the nuance to eating the way that she thinks is correct. That just sounds like diet culture with extra steps. And the last thing that I want to note is that intuitive eaters actually eat more healthy food overall than dieters and people who restrict. And yes, I'm saying that eating healthy is restricting because essentially what you're saying is that there are certain foods that you think are good and certain foods that you think are bad. And as long as you got that food rule, you're gonna be restricting in some way, shape or form. And you might also be in the honeymoon phase of the intuitive eating framework, which essentially means that you're allowing yourself to eat whatever you want. You're making a piece of food. It's a good thing. You're giving yourself unconditional permission to eat. And this takes as long as it takes. And then eventually you'll start eating more nutrient dense foods, craving it because that's what our bodies naturally crave and want. If we follow her through this, it starts with her telling someone who's in doubt that they actually could intuitively eat because there's no such thing as good or bad foods and ends with her claiming that intuitive eaters actually eat more healthy foods than non-intuitive eaters, which I thought was the language of red flags. Healthy, unhealthy, right? These are the language red flags. I'm sure there is some utility in intuitive eating, but I don't see much in a lot of the coaches or counselors. Tell me the wildest way you have ever been fat shamed. I know I look like trash. I have COVID. Please don't comment on my appearance. But the wildest way that I've ever been fat shamed actually happens to me on a regular basis. People on Twitter that have eating disorders regularly repost my videos and use them as motivation to starve themselves and will oftentimes refer to me as cattle, as if I'm not even a person and I just exist for them to make fun of. And I have posted on my page and talked in depth about how I'm in recovery from my own ED. And what's even more wild to me is that when I call thin people with EDs out on their fat phobia, suddenly I'm ableist. And I don't understand the things that they're going through. Which is interesting because I have been in treatment with dozens of thin people with EDs that have never weaponized their disorders to treat people that way. Using people as fat spo is trash behavior. End of discussion. Awesome, I've made it back over to Fatspo Twitter. Wonderful, this is exactly what I needed and I'm so glad that thin people don't care about fat people's mental health. That's really super duper cool and definitely not f up in any way. I had never heard of Fatspo before I started this channel. I've peeked at it one time because someone suggested I make a video on it and it really does seem messed up. I've never struggled with an ED, but I also don't understand why you would need to do this. I want to talk more about this in the future, but for now, I want to touch base about my motives with this channel. I started this channel because I care about health, fitness, and nutrition. It has nothing to do with hating anybody. I don't even dislike the people in my videos. I dislike what they're doing or what they're saying. I see comments and messages like the one I shared on Sunday from people who think this channel is about bullying overweight people. I try to see where they're coming from, but I do think my intentions are pretty well reflected in my channel. If I ever feel different, I'll definitely revise what I'm doing because I'm not doing this to hurt people. I want people to call me out when I'm wrong, but it would be cool to not send false reports to YouTube just because you disagree with me or other creators like me. Everything is all good though for now. Thank you to everyone who left me support under that post. I was stressing when I shared that and y'all were really reassuring and gave me good advice. And I really appreciate that I just felt like you had my back. So thank you to everyone. We're gonna end it here for today. Thanks for coming to hang out on this video with me. Let me know your thoughts down below. I hope all my gym buddies are having nice workouts today. I'm working on a fallacy video and my Doritos video right now, so I'll see you all in the next one. Take care until then.